Okay, so welcome back. Uh, this is another chess timer talk. So if you weren't in the first one, the way this works is that the audience has 20 minutes uh, to ask questions. We encourage you to ask questions early on, but no earlier than five minutes in. Uh, we have our chess timer here. And then the speaker will also have 20 minutes to present. Okay, and then when whoever runs out of time first, we'll negotiate how to proceed from there. So take us away. Thank you. <laughs> so first of all, thank you all for being here, despite all the really nice talk that we have in our rooms. But yeah, let's talk about AKJS and why vector model uh, matter, even uh, in JavaScript. So uh, let's start with a little bit of theory just for someone that get into this room by <laughs> error. And an actor is an execution unit that runs concurrently with other actors. And that's the, the very definition. And uh, an actor is defined by three properties. And the first is that an actor can communicate through other, with other actors through message passing. The second is that an actor can change its behavior. It means that it can keep an internal state and this is really important in developing our application, and then an actor can spawn other actors. So uh, all con uh, concentrated, and this is the very bottom line of the definition of actors, and this is what we will talk about in this session. Um, what we do have in JavaScript nowadays, so what there is there is promise and async await pattern. So async await is just syntactic sugar over promise. And promise offer to the user a very high level abstraction over, over single asynchronous events or computation. It means that they are really perfect for modeling asynchronous events. I mean, uh, fetching some resource from internet, uh, having one connection opened once, and uh, it, they map very well a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, question and answer. Um, what they, insert, they give you, that they give really nice combinators. You can uh, map promises with then, 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 and uh, have really nice combinators on top of promises, instead of having really ugly callbacks that, that's the usual JavaScript way of doing this kind of things, and you don't go back into the into the hell of doom <laughs> uh, with a lot of uh, uh, nesting and so on. Uh, they have a drawback, so they are really nice for one event, but they can handle just one event at the time. So if a promise won't ever return you multiple results over the time, and it's a limitation. What we do have, it's another pattern that is used quite often uh, in a, for modeling a synchronous computation, but is uh, uh, streams. And they are a high level abstraction over asynchronous unbounded event sequences. They are really powerful, really nice. Uh, they, are, uh, they have compilation like uh, DSLs on top of them. The API is quite large normally, but it's really nice. You can get used to it. Uh, and they are a high level abstraction that enable you to model uh, really well unidirectional flows. Someone in this room can <laughs> argue against me, <laughs> but uh, bidirectional flows uh, still looks a little, uh, uh, a little ugly to write with this, uh, with, uh, with this pattern. So streams are really intended to be from one source to one sync. If you try to go the other way around, there are a few libraries like Aka Streams does, but they are kind of, uh, uh, they, everything becomes more convoluted, more uh, difficult to write, more difficult to, to reason about. They are really great for unidirectional flows. So for example, if you have a stream of events that is coming in one single direction, they are really fine. Uh, and then, yeah, we got to the point. So. Uh, we do have actors. They are a lower abstraction. So this is uh, much more low level than promises and, uh, and uh, streams in, from my point of view since they are really closer to metal. And uh, they, uh, they are an ab abstraction of uh, synchronous events and state machines. Uh, it's really easy to model concurrent and distributed systems with actors. This is demonstrated. And uh, uh, they do have drawbacks. 
and the low level API uh, can lead to accidental complexity quite easily. I've seen several cases of it, and the, uh, the API is really low level, so it's, uh, it's required to write code and to be really disciplined when writing it to, to, to take over all the, all, all the problems that you can handle. So in JavaScript, promises, and I think as a weight, also the syntactic sugar over it, are in the standard library, so that's really nice. Streams, we do have an implement, uh, let's say a standard de facto that is uh, RxJS uh, that is implemented and is really nice and is really great. And there are also proposals to, to get streams in the standard library. So this is also great. Uh, not sure how they will shape out, but it's going on and actors, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> so there is almost nothing. There are a couple of libraries, but, but everything is really minor projects on the side. And so that's the reason I wanted to give AkaJS a spin into the JavaScript world. What we do have in the real world, we do have several implementations, several systems, or Linser, NumPony, Elixir, Akka, and Protector, and several others that use the actor model, model to tame uh, really complex systems. So Orleans is on the basis of Azure, uh, Akka is on the, is, stay there for building really high scale and distributed application and clustering. So in the real world, we do have demonstration that vector model uh, tame really well. Concurrency, parallelism, location transparency is really good for having distribution, high availability, fault tolerance. So many of the real world systems are built on top of this abstraction. Let's go a little bit further on. Uh, maybe for who is not familiar with Akka. Akka is a, a real framework for writing a actor, uh, for the actor model and not only uh, built for the JVM. Uh, it is written in Scala and it exposes also a Java API and it is intended to run on the JVM. But since the fact that it is written in Scala, uh, in Scala we do have an alternative compiler that is a really first class compiler for Scala and it's really great that is called the Scala.js and that compile pure Scala code to JavaScript that you can run. Uh, okay, this is easy. <laughs> so let's take the Akka source code that is written in Scala, compile it with Scala.js and we do have Akka.js. It means that uh, getting from the, from standing on the shoulders of giants, Akka is an incredible framework developed by several engineers, really good. And uh, the point is that we are getting all the benefit of their work for free, thanks to Scala.js that is great in doing, in doing this translation to JavaScript. And since a few months ago, AkaJS was available only for Scala developers because the API and everything was exposed just in, for the Scala world. But since a few months, yeah, uh, since a little bit now, uh, you can also install AkaJS for NPM. So you directly have a minimum, at least a subset of the actor model available directly from JavaScript without having to know nothing about Scala, nothing about the ecosystem, just bare JavaScript. And that's uh, interesting because you do have all the power, all the efficiency, all the system that is built with a really good language and higher level with Akka, but you, uh, you can use it directly from JavaScript to Viva. Yeah. So then how, how beautiful or ugly is it to use, um, to use basically the JavaScript version of Akka.js? Ah, I mean, well, does it look totally different than, than Scala, J or, I'm sorry, uh, Akka actors? So in my feeling, uh, using AkaJS from, uh, from uh, JavaScript is pretty the same that using it in Scala. So the code, even with JavaScript syntax, will become much closer to what you will see from uh, uh, Scala. So we can, we can look at it. Okay, yeah, I wanna, in particular, I want to know what like, the message handler looks like. Because you know we think in terms of pattern matching in Scala land, but what about ah. JavaScript? <laughs> yeah, this looks a little, a little uglier, <laughs> of course. Uh, so uh, you do have, <laughs> you do have if. <laughs> so yeah, so, so you're, you're you're checking for everything rather than having a nice pattern match. Okay, that, that totally expected. 
Ah, uh, yes, unfortunately, unfortunately, there are uh, so much programming languages that are really missing a, g a very good pattern matching, and that's <laughs> something we, we have to live with, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, you're, you're right, but despite, uh, despite the uh, lack of pattern matching, everything else looks pretty much the same, let's say, with something uh, Included. So I do have this example in this case. Yeah, you sorry. Uh, I don't know, maybe you will uh, go into this a bit further, but could you give us a bit of a uh, motivating example? Like, uh, why, uh, what is a practical use case where it is necessary to use actor model in JavaScript? Yeah, great. So, uh, practical. Fine. That's an example. <laughs> so imagine, imagine we, do have, we do want to model something with actors. Why actors are good? Um, something we haven't explored that much, unfortunately, and to my great surprise, in JavaScript are web sockets. So everything is still on REST. That is a uh, call and response that get modeled very well with, with promises. What we don't have modeled very often in libraries is, is a web socket handling that is done over callbacks all the time right now. Because a web socket is a bidirectional channel between your server and, and the client. Let's try to write a Twitter server that will handle uh, incoming connection and map them with uh, and and uh, provide them some uh, Twitter stream uh, stream of tweets uh, using vector model. This is uh, an example. So, for example, we can model as an actor a Twitter listener that will be something that in the pre-start, let's say. Uh, before starting the actor, we connect to, uh, we create a, a Twitter module and map the callback into notifying to his of its children um, the tweet that he received. So the point here is that uh, Akka, in Akka, we have the fortunate uh, thing that uh, Akka actors are modeled into hierarchies. So if we do have a parent that is this Twitter uh, listener, we can spawn uh, many children, and we do have handlers for these children very handy to use. In this case, uh, if this actor receives a, a tweet from this Twitter module, it will reply and forward it to all the children. Uh, of course, when this actor stops, it will untrack all the, all the um, topic and the tra that is tracking. And the point is simply that uh, when he receives a message, if the message uh, contains a WebSocket handler connection, he will spawn a son uh, that will be a Twitter server uh, service. It means that every time we get an incoming connection, we simply model this incoming connection with the spawn of an actor into our actor system. So this is concurrent code that we are writing free of uh, loops for or uh, having global maps or whatever. We are simply spawning an actor to handle one connection. That is pretty straight uh, concept. Instead, if we are going to track a new topic on Twitter, we simply track it on the, on the Twitter module that we have. At this point, it's quite straightforward, also the implementation of a Twitter service that is one handler for one connection. At this point, we have removed all the complexity of having Twitter it through several connections. We can think our business logic just about one single connection that will be mapped with an actor. At this point, we, have, we map the WebSocket uh, to uh, every time we, are rece we are receive a message, we simply assume that the client this is the server, so we simply assume that the client uh, is sending us a, a new topic to track, and we send it to the parent that will track the new topic. And the, every time we receive, yeah, we receive a, a message, we basically filter if it is in our topic, and we send it over the web socket if it is. A yeah. question. Um, in Java, Akka uses uh, some high-performance uh, libraries for network messaging, and when you ported Akka to <coughs> uh, JavaScript, uh, what alternatives do you use? Because uh, from my understanding, uh, 
for actors uh, messaging is a key uh, uh, like feature that should be uh, thought about when you implement this uh, framework uh, you are talking about the performances uh, in Hi. <clears throat> Which uh, networking library do you use in JavaScript for? Ah, networking library. Yes. Uh, in this case, I'm I'm straight ahead taking from the from the Node modules. So I'm not building nothing special or nothing different. It's not nothing. It's nothing directly related with uh, Akka. Akka is just a framework for help you into managing concurrent into managing and modeling concurrent code. What I'm doing in this case, I'm just taking a, a library that is called Promise, Promise WS, that is a library for handling WebSocket connection and using it. So uh, how the server and how the networking is handled is not done into ACK. ACK is a framework for the actor model that is really separated from what you will do into the networking. It just, in this case, um, from my point of view, it plays well with the actor model since it's easier to think about this model having one connection up to with one actor, everything runs quite smoothly, but I'm not doing nothing about performances over the network. So, this library offers us... I have a question. Sure. So, for example, in, in Scala, you have the the freedom in Akka to specify like how many threads you want to use and like abstract all the actors on your threads and how is this done in JavaScript? Ah, of course, you have one thread, it's easy. <laughs> so, what, so what is then like the real advantage of this model? The real advantage in this model is that concurrency, concurrency is really different from parallelism. So uh, concurrency can and should be handled properly even in a single threaded environment. So having one actor that maps one connection is something, is something that, is, uh, that is really sound, but really sound in the implementation is something that maps really well the, con the concept of uh, 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 concurrency that you do have here, and you go really fast away from callbacks. What, how you do it in JavaScript normally is using callbacks. In this way, you basically map every time you have a callback, straight ahead with uh, the send of a message, with the spawn of an actor, you map the action of doing something on, into the actor, uh, with the actor framework on top of the uh, straight ahead with the callbacks. So you get so out of it quite easily. the first one. Um, did you ever run into problems because you're mixing two concurrency models that you have actors and also asynchronous callbacks in the same programs with the event loop in the background? Did this lead to any problems or difficulties? So uh, Akka itself and uh, is porting to, to, to JavaScript is all done in a synchronous way. So every action you perform on vect uh, with actors is done asynchronously. It means in uh, the node implementation, for example, you do have a queue of events that got uh, processed one by one. And so you are always in that queue of events. You are never basically uh, running something into the main thread blocking, let's say. So given the fact that you are always asynchronous, problems can come from the user implementation, but not from the actor model. So since the actor model is everything is executed asynchronously, you are more on the safe side, let's say. So this actually more is about the programming model than about the processing model, since you only have one thread. Uh, yes. Is this correct? Yes, yes, this is correct. Okay, since uh, since you. you have just one thread, and the the queue of timeouts and interval and promises is detached, and it's execu executed all the same time. I have had to uh, handle with node or a mm -hmm. JavaScript engine to change it. So okay. the processing is always the same. OK, thank you. Hi. Um, how do you handle errors in, um, with the actor model? Do you, do you have like an Erlang supervision trace and that sort of thing? Or uh, yep. you do it? 
So this is the very interesting part. Since, uh, since uh, I'm not writing a, an, actor, an actor framework from scratch, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, that is an actor framework that is really huge, and it handles also with supervision the failures of each actor. So you can, do, you can implement some let it crash mechanism with actors, and they are by default restarted by, by the supervisor actor. This is something that is tunable. I haven't exposed actually it's the API in JavaScript, but it's trivial. So it means that uh, it's just one binding away from having it in directly in JavaScript. But the mechanism is already there, and everything is already there to, 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 to be used. Uh, what about clusterization and persistence? Ah, well, <laughs> okay. So on persistence, I have been asked already, and the first one was? Clustering. Clustering. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, so clustering and persistence are not ported yet. Uh, I do have, uh, so in a Scala, from Scala.js, you do have access to ACA actor, ACA streaming, ACA typed or, uh, at the moment. So these are the three main modules that you, and all the test kits of each one. Um, you don't have all of this in JavaScript. You do have at the moment, just a character. I am uh, trying to exploit it first. Uh, persistence can be done over local storage of HTML5 or PouchDB or IndexedDB, whatever. Uh, I have been, I hadn't got the time <laughs> to work on it, <laughs> simply. And the clustering, I have attempted to work on it uh, a bunch of times. But the basic uh, building block for clustering is ACA remote. And uh, ACA remote implementation is, uh, despite of the fact that it is quite pluggable, it is really hard to get it right. And I've attempted a few times, so now the direction probably is going to be an integration for, uh, for, uh, between ACA on the JVM and uh, ACA on JS, or even different ACA JS will go through gRPC, I guess, in the future but it's not done at the moment. Yeah. So just to clarify, I think it's kind of implied in what you said already that your primary target is uh, uh, the browser, right? You, you're not thinking yet about uh, using it uh, to process uh, messages on the server, for example, in Node.js environment. This is a server. Or so this is a server. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a server. Uh, this is a server that is cr that is connecting to a port and is uh, serving through WebSocket. So the target is JavaScript. That's it. Without any knowledge, it is the browser, Node, uh, Phantom, uh, Spider Monkey, whatever. So the target the target is JavaScript. Okay. Yep. All good. Yeah, <laughs> so let's uh, try to go on. So we do have a, a server here. We spawn a server that will handle WebSocket, and uh, maybe if we have time, we can run it later. But uh, now we can uh, start it, actually. So let's connect it. And uh, OK. It was expected to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to show some code. That's good. So uh, to validate all of these ideas, to, to, have, uh, uh, to use the actor model, and to enforce the fact that uh, it is really useful even for JavaScript, I have done what everyone that is programming in JavaScript nowadays is doing. So I have rolled out my own JavaScript framework for the DOM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Based on actors, so everyone is doing. Why not? Why? Why should I <laughs> go against it? <laughs> and uh, you do have AKJS DOM. It's, it is a very early release, but it's released. It's on GitHub, etc. And it features quite a number of good things that are coming directly from modeling with actors. So I have local mutable state. What's React, Vue, etc. do in the front end normally is uh, to calculate to setting the state and changing in a functional way the, uh, some components and uh, some, uh, uh, some components that are on the page, calculating a wall diff of the wall page and, and, uh, and, uh, send and uh, rendering into the page the diff, so applying the patch to the, uh, to the wall page. What 
becomes natural with actor is to keep the local mutable state within actors. That is a really good practice that you have from vector model. So uh, you can think at the DOM, the DOM is actually a hierarchy of nodes. Why not mapping one subtree of the DOM to the life cycle of an actor and map directly this thing? So what happened is that the uh, when you spawn an actor, you spawn a tree of, uh, you spawn a little subtree of the DOM and when the actor dies, you remove it from the visualization and the local mutable state is kept inside the actor. So I don't have never to recalculate a wall page diff to calculate the new version of the VDOM to apply the, the, the patches efficiently. I can calculate the virtual DOM and the patches straight ahead on the small subtree that is, that is contained in the actors. Since I completely know that this state is not shared with the rest, it's just kept locally. And this is incredibly efficient. And so we do have local mutable state kept in actors. We have a page application separation. So we do want uh, applications on, in the front end right now. They are going, they are really complex things. They are, they do are, have, uh, they are software, <laughs> so it's, uh, they are complex and they are done uh, and right now everything is done in the page with some modularization system but it's really hard to follow and what I've uh, tried to apply here is to have the page that is just dedicated to the rendering and to the handling of the events, so just to the visual part and everything else is de detached in the back end and you don't have to, to, to to, uh, to do anything into the page at the end, or almost nothing. So, location transparency for application. I do want that my application code written with vectors can move across different environments. So for debugging, you can spawn it within the page, so you do have access to every, um, every debugging tools and all the tools and all the things that you have in the page, but you can spawn it into workers or, or web workers. What means this? That you do have real parallelism. So what Node does when you spawn a web worker is to spawn another Node uh, machine in the background in, into the front end. So you can have your application spawned into a, separ to a, into a separate machine but just communicated with the page. This is uh, starting to be, uh, this start to be interesting and of course Everything, as I explained before, is, uh, is uh, fully asynchronous since it is kept and is built on the show, uh, on Akka. And for going further, I have implemented also some easy way for having the communication between different workers, so different pay pieces of your application uh, detached from the page and direct communication. So you can have workers that are communicating one each other without passing through uh, uh, the page and the page remains just as a rendering engine. Let's see how it looks like. For example, this is a sim very simple demo. Uh, what you do have into the page is that you have this uh, concept of this component that is a UI manager. A UI manager is the handler, the hook, uh, for the component that you will develop in the background. As you can see, it can be, it, it can be spawned from a require, so directly in page, or normally what you do is to spawn it in a worker or in a shared worker. Everything is uh, completely transparent to your application. So it means that the code that you wrote for, for, for your piece of visualization or your piece of code, is, it remains the same and you can spawn it in different environments. How it looks like uh, in the background, you do have this concept of DOM actor. That is what I explained uh, briefly before. So an actor with life cycle is connected straight ahead with a piece of DOM. Uh, you do have something uh, React-like that is the render method that will return uh, some piece of DOM that will be visualized and uh, you can have a received method that uh, will update its internal status. In this specific case, we are simply binding this clock element to the root, to a root div uh, element in the in page and we are updating the value, sending, uh, sending a date to it. 
yeah, we don't have the bang operator in, <laughs> in JavaScript, but it looks like this. And of course, if you look at the result, is a clock. So uh, we are sending updates every one second, and you do have one clock rendered. And if you look, uh, uh, this is already running with a component in page and a component in a web worker in background in a separate machine. And you can see that also rendering is pretty instant and you don't have any uh, much uh, uh, performances problem. You do have one little caveat in doing, uh, in doing the, into going through this architecture, that is the handling of events. So. Uh, when you are working in a, in, a, in a worker, you don't have access to the DOM. So what is happening is that you have to register handlers for returning uh, actions or returning comments and messages at the end in, into the background. For doing so, you can specify your handlers, so the actions that you want to track in the DOM, in the page, into a separate module that will be shared in between the page and your backend application. This is a very general way to approach the problem. And how, what happened is that simply this module is called into the page and into the, um, into the implementation. And our DOM actor simply map, uh, declare, that it's in its events, he wants to map on the click in this piece of code, so in this piece of DOM that will be rendered, uh, the action of the DOM handler that is click, that is described here. So having this uh, distinction and mapping, one, and mapping explicitly the events into a, se a separate piece of library, we, c we are able to, to transfer and uh, transparently the events from the front end to the back end. And we do expect that every time this DOM click is called, it has a return that is click, and we will receive it as a message into the receive function. So everything play nice again with actor model <laughs> since we have messages, we are just receiving a message. They are really simple concept and they works really well. Even, even in this, uh, in, in this uh, field. So when you do that click, of course, every time we click, you have click received. Okay, let's... Any question? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> short question. Do you um, uh, support the uh, become and become thing to, to, of to use state machines? Of course, so the state machine, no, not on become, actually. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm biased probably on become, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you do have become. So become, become is totally mapped and uh, within the message, for example, here you can uh, write uh, if something, uh, this dot become will, uh, will work to, to another function that will be, uh, that will be provided. So uh, as I said, all the mechanism and all the basics of the uh, actor model are, implement, are ported already. So spawning of new actors in the tree hierarchy, changing behavior and sending messages, everything is there. Yeah. I have a question about the implementation detail. Uh, so you're not doing the uh, diffing between the DOM trees, right? Uh, whenever the state of the, of the actor is updated, you basically redraw the whole thing, right? No, so basically every time, every time uh, uh, you call uh, this dot update, what happen? What happen is that uh, I s explained that you have a component in front end and the component in back end. We are in the back end, let's say, of our front end application. So we are in a worker. What happen when you call update is that uh, uh, the new visualization of the DOM is calculated uh, in background, uh, just of a subtree related to this DOM actor. Uh, in the background, the diff of the two, of the previous visualization and the new one is calculated using a VDOM, virtual DOM algorithm. The, it is calculated the patch to be applied to the old right. visualization to reflect the new one. It is sent in page and applied to the DOM. 
So all the calculation is done in background, and the front end page is just to apply the, the modification. I see. I see. The patch. Uh, yeah. So when when you do have this uh, this kind of events, you can do quite nice things. So for example, imagine and uh, given given the fact that this is really principled approach to the problem, you can imagine that you do want to, uh, for example, calculate prime numbers. And, uh, <laughs> and um, so what happened what happen is that you can have a prime numbers component that is calculating prime numbers, of course, and uh, um, it can be spawned into several uh, pieces. So in this case, I spawned this get primes into the page, but I can spawn several other workers, and I can start calculating uh, prime numbers. As you can see, our application is running quite smoothly. So, and as you can as you can see, my I'm bombing my CPUs. <laughs> of course, but uh, the point is that this is a really parallel application. So I'm doing everything in background. I'm just calculating the patch. The patch are sent into the page, and everything is still responsive and still works, despite the fact that uh, my CPUs are burning. Uh, let's try. Do you want to try to have me pressing this? Okay, do it. <laughs> you can see that trying to, to calculate prime numbers in, in page, actually it's completely bombing the, the page and the refreshes are gone almost. And the page is not responsive anymore. Actually, normally what happens is that also Chrome is crashing, as you can see. Oh, <laughs> no, not the whole machine, but uh, you can see that. It <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is not refreshing. I'm not able to stop it. Uh, everything got stuck, and I have my CPUs completely bombed. And okay, let's close it <laughs> to to relax the load. And yeah, this is uh, this is interesting because the point here is that uh, um, is that uh, our applications right now are done uh, with other frameworks that are like React, Vue, et cetera. They do not allow you to offload part of the, part of, part of the computations or part of your application to web worker. So you don't have a good abstraction over it. And the problem is that uh, all the libraries that enable you to use web worker within JavaScript that I've seen uh, implement an, uh, something like an RPC. Uh, communication. So you do want to make a cal an expensive calculation in the ground, you make a request and you have an, a, uh, an answer. Uh, you don't have this concept of asynchronous events that, are, that can come uh, and, and goes in both directions and you are much more in trouble. So developing it. Um, so let's Try to go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so in. Uh, so we, only, we only have a couple minutes left. So I don't know if you want to take questions. Anybody? Yeah. All right. Pass that over. Um, just to clarify for me, because I'm not a JavaScript developer. Um, so this actor model you can easily apply for the front end using the DOM as well as on Node.js for. Uh, yeah. background server uh, operation and then uh, just follow up you mentioned that after uh, behind each one of these actor you spawn like a node.js node for each one actor or did i get it wrong uh, no actually actually this is not a, not not a one actor one worker so uh, the work the number of worker you decide and you spawn uh, exactly workers so they are defined as workers in javascript and uh, normally what you do is in each web worker you spawn an actor system. Then from it, from it you can have uh, uh, as many actors as you want within each worker. So they are not one-to-one -one relation. I just want to show you something that is uh, the second part of what I've shown before, that is the front end for the Twitter <laughs> server that we have developed this, uh, briefly before. So we have a Twitter socket that is handling uh, the WebSocket communication, and it's just connecting to the WebSocket 
with a connected channel that will enable uh, this worker to communicate with another worker. The other worker is handling the UI, so we'll show you some nice visualization for the topic and tracks done with uh, actors again. So we do have uh, the page that is spawning to, to web workers and uh, how this looks like is like this. And we have the server hopefully running and we can, uh, for example, try to track some topic and of course you can have you know, from different windows you can do you can track diff different topics and uh, of course the ui remain reactive everything is received in one in one web worker thread is a uh, uh, delivered to another web worker that is calculating the new UI that is represented. And this is how it looks like at the end. Everything done with vectors, so concurrence is directly handled. We have to think just at one component at the time. So, questions? <laughs> Nick Mitchell from IBM. Um, <clears throat> I don't know the answer to this question, so hopefully you do. Have you used the Electron framework? No, I'm yeah. not. I'm just delivering JavaScript code. So well, Electron is, is a... Yeah, uh, a, it, can, it can run. Actually, what, uh, I have integration tests that are running in Electron, but it is just a detail. Let's okay. say. I, I, thought, I thought there was a case that in Electron, the web workers could have an IPC channel um, between back bi-directional IPC okay. channel. No, so, I'm not aware. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Sorry. Looking into. I think uh, they can do that. It's possible. It's possible, actually. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know uh, the specific of the Electron framework. I have never developed for it explicitly. So. <laughs> we can do one final question. Anybody? So, can you, if you've got multiple web workers, do they each have to have a distinct actor system? Or you can have one actor system that spans multiple workers so you can get remote actor refs between them, for example? Uh, so all the combinations are completely arbitrary. In uh, this case, for example, the example of the uh, prime numbers that I shown before, uh, what happened is that from the front end, we are uh, spawning in the front end again, one uh, actor system that is uh, in this uh, spawner, <laughs> let's call it. And in this spawner, the very first thing that we are doing is we are uh, uh, generating a, a new UI for the first element that was the one rendered in page. But what happened when, when you receive a new message is that we are spawning new web workers. So uh, you don't have limitations on the metrics that you can. So from one, one actor, you can spawn uh, new workers. From a worker, from, uh, the only limitation is that you have to do the spawning of web workers should happen in page, from the page. Yeah, but for example, if, if you've got two web workers spawned, yep. is it possible to get um, an actor ref in web worker A that references an actor in worker B? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, point, the point is that you, can have a di you do have a direct connection, but I, uh, this is what I was working on. So, for example, in this ping pong example, you do have a connected channel, but it means that you, can, you have a proxy that is uh, something like from this web worker, I want to expose my connection to the world, to the rest of the world. And you do have a connected channel that is a bidirectional channel that you, that you say, I do expect to have another connected channel in another work, in another work called Pong, and I want to talk one each other. And this is actually one, uh, one actor that is basically subscribed to all the messages that are coming from the second web worker, and that every time you receive a message, it can forward it to the, to the other web worker. So it's uh, much more raw than the, the, than the Scala standard, but the, we do have much, uh, some limitations here. Uh, I will have to implement properly a career mode <laughs> for doing so. Thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.